Hello. Oh, James. Why? Hi. <laughs> my name's Corwin. And my name's James. And thanks for listening to this movie's gay. Woo, Corwin. Guess what? Oh, my God. We did God, it. James, what? We hit 10,000 plays. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, Today, I saw what you tweeted about it. We were close, and I was like, but oh, no, congrats. thank you, but no cigar. <laughs> and I said, we got to do this. Then my good friend Corwin, a.k.a. the host of this show. Yeah, I'm the blimey co-host. We bumped over. We got it. We're 10,000 strong, just like Million Mothers Strong. That's my favorite website. I, <laughs> I'm lost for words, honestly. Uh, do you know what that is? <laughs> No. Oh, they're just like a really like a hardcore conservative Christian mothers group who are like these are these shows need to get canceled because they are anti-family. Oh my God. And it's like go there, go to their website because you'll find great shows to watch. <laughs> <laughs> you just use the website for like the opposite. They're like, don't watch these shows, and you're like, oh, I'm going to watch all. Of these. Yes, I think most people use their website as that. Like Star versus the Forces of Evil was always on their list because in some episodes, Marco would play a princess, so he would be like dressed as a princess, and they were like, this is this is vital to our children's minds. Disney needs to get this out, and it's like, okay, well, one. No. And two, this isn't on Disney. This is on Disney XD or whatever it's called these days. So it's like deep cable. If your children are finding this, fuck off. That's your bad. That's their bad. And it's not even uh, a bad show. It's a fantastic show. Everyone should watch it. As the Million Moms tells us to. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Um, today we're joined by a wonderful special guest who you, if you're watching the, the channel, you can see right here, Gabby, who is a friend of Ryan's, who has been on the podcast a couple of times now. And hmm. Gabby reached out and was like, Hey, uh, do you need guests? And I was like, um, yes, absolutely. And she chose the movie this week. So, uh, it was a wonderful one. Hmm. Might I say? Oh, I know James I, will absolutely disagree. I'm glad you can you can get <laughs> tell tell us about yourself. Say anything you want. You know, really uh, within within reason, obviously. But sure. I think that's understood. Um, well, <laughs> well, hey everyone. Uh, my name is Gabby. My pronouns are she, they, or anything respectful. Um, I am an actor, uh, certified intimacy director, a fight director, Ooh. and a director. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of those unicorns out in the wild, an intimacy director. Um, That's, and, you know, <laughs> important. It is, but you can see why this kind of influenced my movie choice. Your choice? Today, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, my first thought, actually. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, he vanished. Who? I saw HPG join the join the general, and I was gonna drag him over to say hello, and he left. Now he's in the chat. Corwin, we what? used to have an issue. How close are you to your microphone now? You used to be like a, a, an indie rocker from 2011 singing in the other studio, and now you're it. So, you are so <laughs> loud. <laughs> I, 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 you know, James, there, I'm just right living there, my best good. life. That's I'm good. living my best life. I just got excited. Oh, back away from the mic when you get excited like this. James, <laughs> James, I that's think... asking too much of me. Nicole might be getting mad at me. I don't know. Nicole's like, James, what are you talking about? You're always on your mic. I don't know. Yeah, you're but actually, I, I like, know mic control. Yeah. I, I see the waves. Wow. I've been doing this for wow. years. Yeah, I don't have anything up to show me my way. I see at the bottom uh, that I'm hitting a good spot right now, and that's about it. That's all I see. This is what the show is, Gabby. This is what you've joined. This is it's just James it's and I arguing. I, I thought we were going to talk about movies, but, you know, distance from Mike also. That's <laughs> uh <laughs> It's is it is it an episode of a podcast with James if there's not something brought up about microsound? Yeah, the whole time? it's not. It's not. 
<laughs> Unless he has no guest or no person with him. Oh, no, I'll still be talking about mics and shit. I'll also still be talking about you guys and your mic control. I'll be like, I'll be like, this shit is so easy to edit because, yeah, when I get when I get whispery, I'm going to like use a stage whisper instead of just talking like this. This is bad tech. No, you need to be like this. But if I'm going to scream in a closet, because that's generally where I record alone, uh, I'm going to be back here. Well, James. What up? I'm mixing my own sound. (laughs) I'm doing it myself. I'm doing the best I can. Watch a YouTube video. I'm an actor. I'm an actor. I'm I'm the the, the acting. I'm not doing the sound mixing. You got to do it all. Hey, hey, people guys said when James says to lean back and flail, he looks very much like a cross between Kermit and Animal. Hell, dude, that is (laughs) one of the highest compliments I've ever gotten. (laughs) Thank you. Especially James's color palette today, definitely on the animal side, I would say, with these reds and oranges. He he told he told one of his other uh, co-hosts and I uh, f- on this podcast that if he went to a holiday party, he would wear that. He would, you know, dress up really well. And that's the jacket that he would wear. OK, no, no, no. This is not the specific jacket I would <laughs> it's wear. It's not the specific outfit, but it is, it but is this one of the is- jackets. Which is, it, it works well. It's it's nautical themed. It's got lighthouses on that. All the people who are listening are like, we have heard this for the past three weeks, James. Stop. It's, or, you <laughs> keep wearing the same outfit. And no, I'm, I'm, wearing my, hello. I'm wearing my satanic The Soulless shirt that I got in 10th grade, which is now 13 years ago. Oh my God, mm. James. The point is, it's the same jacket. It's been the same jacket every time. Thanks. It's Again, cold. it's on theme with the movie today. So, yeah. oh, it I mean, is we're on theme. You are, so. you are correct. Mm-hmm. And James, before we get into the movie, was there any, uh, <laughs> you know, any of those things to yell at me that you normally do? Um, oh, geez, now in twenty third grade, <laughs> uh, I would <laughs> like to say, based on last episode, it was oranges they were throwing at that naked man, not tomatoes. It was. I will acknowledge it was oranges. I was wrong. There we go. And then I feel vindicated on, like, eating with your hands is a Western style thing because on John Oliver this week, they were talking about, they. it was a quick fork fact, about how, like, forks were, like, an Eastern thing and then... When the West would ridicule people, they'd be like, our hands are our forks. God gave us this. And I'm glad that if if God gave people hands for fork, well, that means his majesty, the unholy Lucifer, gave us forks. And that's why I'm vindicated again. And I'm reassured that I am on the right path, which is the left hand path. And... <laughs> praise be the Lucifer that I... He gave us forks. Gabby, I'm so sorry. Oh, James is very passionate <laughs> no. about not touching your food. I... <laughs> that is very specific. I will uplift this uh, origin story of Lucifer giving us the fork. As uh, I went to high school in Hinsdale and uh, our mascot was the Red Devils, were the Red Devils, and depicted with a giant fork. Oh, my God. Like, I... I mean, it was a pitchfork, but it's <laughs> iconic. Connected yeah. to Lucifer himself, yes. Hell yes. Of course he gave us forks. He gave us the pitchfork <laughs> to pick up, like, big meats with, even though it's, you know, like, uh, I guess that's, like, vegetarian stuff because, you know, you're picking up hay and I guess you could pick anything up with a pitchfork. You got a couple <laughs> bowls of ice cream, put it in the middle of the tines of the pitchfork. I. And then you can slide it to people like it's a pizza oven to them. Yeah. Hell yeah. That was too much. My mic went or my my camera was like, no, we're going to blur all this. Everything's going to be blurry now. Uh, I think that's all for my week, really. My week, I dyed my hair silver. So that's, that's, that's what's going on right now. My light is a little yellow looking though so it looks kind of blonde but it's it's silver and uh yeah i do need to acknowledge that i was wrong with the oranges i thought they were tomatoes it's okay it is i can admit that i was gonna say something else to you james but i don't remember what it was so oh well doesn't matter was ha! it about how happy you are that we're at ten thousand views but we need another ten thousand so, starting I'm, next week 
I'm so excited that we hit 10,000 listens. That's incredible. It's a wonderful journey we've had. Um, Gabby, how was your week? Putting you on the uh, spot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, let's see. I'm trying to think how my week was. It was annoying because uh, my ceiling sprung a leak a while, uh, like two or three weeks ago, and uh, they did not finish it until this past week. But the first day they were supposed to show up, I woke up because they were supposed to be there at 8 a.m. They didn't show up. Then the next day I woke up really early because they were like, well, we didn't come yesterday, so we'll come today at 8 a.m. They didn't show up. And finally, the third day uh, after emailing my landlord being like, hey, I can't move all of my living room furniture again. They need to show up. Finally, it got fixed and done. Thank goodness. Um, but now my ceiling is two different colors because the the paints don't match and I don't want them to paint my entire ceiling. Wow. What a boring uh, uh, quarantine. It's not. Activity. <laughs> it's- <laughs> As soon as you started talking about a leaking ceiling, I'm pretty sure James has like a song about that. I do. My uh, <laughs> our ceiling has leaked now. We've been in this apartment almost five years. It has leaked for almost five years. It caved in once. They and it's not like they don't show up. They show up and they fit in air quotes fix it. But it keeps leaking no matter what they do, no matter how much new roofing they put down, it keeps leaking. Mm. And yeah, when it caved in because they kept neglecting it and not really fixing it, I made a diss song to them and the like main person of the highest up you can talk to at this company called me and was like, hey, you know, I'm such and such, you know, like I want to get this fixed because now it's it's. Not just an issue for you, it's an issue for us. We're like just shoveling money at this issue and nothing's happening. Also, really want to like give you props on this diss song. It was funny. You could have just been cursing at us. You didn't do that. It was very (laughs) wholesome, but also angry. I was like, yes, that's the image I try to portray. Wholesome and pissed. Wholesome and pissed. Anwell said she loves the things you're passionate about. Wholesome for a leaking ceiling. Oh no! Wait, say that We've again. We've gotten robot Gabby for a second. Am Hello. I, robot still? I oh, am you're... here. Okay. Hello. Oh God. Oh, you're good. I th- I think you're good now. <laughs> Not a robot. Um, <laughs> I was uplifting <laughs> James's uh, wholesome joke because uh, leaking feeling a hole, and that's what you missed in the robot voice. Um, what was your question for me? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I, w- <laughs> I was just going to say, like, if it keeps leaking and you need someone to write a diss song to your landlord, hit me up. <laughs> we'll see. I've been able to, like, use uh, persistent kindness in order to get the problem solved. So, yeah, but I'm I'm glad to know you now. Now I have. Heck yeah. Now I have that resource. <laughs> you yeah. have that resource to use. <laughs> Um, I would just say, Anwell said that she loves the things James is passionate about. And I'm like, we've hit, what, two of them so far? Yeah. Uh, three of them. We've hit uh, Mike. He's he's passionate about sound, like getting the sound done right. He's passionate mm-hmm. about how much his co-hosts bully him. And he's passionate about the ceiling that is leaky in his apartment. I thought the just- three things you were going to say is Mike technique. Eating with silverware and Satan. Eating with silverware. There we go. Eating with silverware. (laughs) Forgot about that one. I would say you're passionate about Satan, but you know, James, I haven't really seen the passion. Um, You've been far more passionate about eating with silverware than than Satan. So, well, Satan gave us the fork. So technically, (laughs) and your jacket. Your jacket. You're very passionate about your nautical theme jacket. No, you guys Uh, keep bringing it up. I just wore it once and took a very handsome selfie. I And then you wore it last the last podcast and you wore yeah. it I think, was the podcast before that was TC? Yeah. So you wore it last podcast and you wore it this podcast. So like yeah, this is know. my streamer jacket now. It's true. James has a look now. I've yeah. got my crown. James has a dra- uh, a nautical jacket. We love it. But about your nautical theme jacket, this week's movie was very uh on the beach shell themed um (laughs) ammonite was the name of the movie and with all of our guests we have them do a quick synopsis of the movie um so gabby 
throwing that on you. Just, we don't warn the guests. We just tell them, hello, give us a quick synopsis. Thank you. Yeah, so this is kind of a queering of history, of little known history, I suppose, because we don't actually know this person's love life or we don't have quote unquote proof of it. Um, But this is a movie about Mary Anning, who is one of the first female paleontologists. She found an ichiosaur uh, uh, skeleton, complete skeleton, when she was 12 years old. Damn. Like, yeah, like she's so cool. I've nerded out about her for since I was in middle school and found out about her. So when this movie came out, I was like, oh, holy shit, got to see it. So Mary Anning takes in Charlotte Murchison, who is the melancholic wife of another geologist and um, kind of nurses her back to happiness. And in that nursing back to happiness, they end up falling in love and having a passionate affair. And then they eventually, spoiler alert, uh, part ways. It is a fictional telling of their relationship. These are two actual real people in history who were friends and knew each other. Even Fiona Fiona Shaw is in the movie too, and her character is also uh, an actual human being. All paleontologists, all scientific ladies. And yeah, that's my little synopsis, I suppose. Beautiful, beautiful synopsis. Thank you. Um, so, uh, James, I messaged James, um, and he messaged me, and he was like, did you choose this movie, or did our guest choose this movie? And I was like, well, the guest chose the movie. And he was like, okay, uh, well, y'all have to talk, because I have nothing to say. And I was like, well, why, James? Why would you have nothing to say? And he said, I only have about five notes. So I want to take a moment and guess what those notes were. I'm just going to just a general. Okay. Guess. I truly think you will not guess my notes for this. I, I might not. But uh, if I don't like I'm at least hitting things that James would probably talk about. Yeah. Go um, for it. OK, so number one, just first off the bat, the the pee, the peeing on the beach and then immediately grabbing food. <laughs> not watching it. <laughs> that happened? <laughs> Did yeah. You know, were you watching, watching the movie? movie? <laughs> Guys, I'm going to be completely honest. I checked out mo- like this movie could have been 48 minutes. It, it, oh my it God. It felt a lot. Th- it's my same gripe when I started watching Eraserhead. Don't know if you guys like David Lynch. I've seen Eraserhead, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, and if you like David Lynch, hey, I am sorry you've been conned by that man. But. He constantly does these like long drawn out establishing shots. And it's like you just bring us to where right before you need us to get there and then start the shot there instead of these like I don't need to see people walk up the entire street, get to the door, look to make sure it's the address, look up at the uh, the house to make sure it's the correct house on the address. And it's like. Now I'm going in. Just start with the looking at the address and being like, now I'm going in. Uh, All so right. I Moving checked out the- a lot. Yes. I am Moving sorry. Moving on to the next, next, next note. Um, did you, did you have a note about Fiona Shaw's uh, open blouse with corset, like the, the, her whole outfit going on? Do you have anything about that? Oh, the like green one? No, the um when we first see her in her when we garden. When we first see her in her garden. She's Wait. wearing those red leather gloves. Red and, leather, I, mean, I have when opinions, she was going obviously. To the, the salve. <laughs> oh, the botanist? Oh. Yes. Oh, no, I didn't I didn't have anything oh written down oh about that. Oh, my the, God. Like, James, were you watching yeah, the same movie? I was. <laughs> no, I remember this scene, but there's just, I there was nothing I could... All this is just someone is like, hey, guys, I would like to tell you about my day. And it's like, okay. And then they tell me about my day, uh, about their day. And I'm like, "Uh, yeah, that's someone's day. And James. I think uh, we watch different films. We we watch. Well, (laughs) I don't think James is used to watching films like this, uh, which is totally okay. Okay. Before this podcast, I wasn't used to watching films. Okay. Okay, let me. And do you have a note about the 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 numerous intimacy scenes? Intimate scenes? Not really. Like there's a oh deedle, and then like there's. I did. I do have one note about like not even daughters out there. If you are supporting oh your mother financially, you can let a moan out. 
I don't care if your mom's like, oh my God, they're doing sinful stuff. S- fucking get bent, mom. I've also come to realize I don't enjoy moms that much uh, over this the course of this past week. But I... Uh, passionate about not liking mom <laughs> that's the only thing i had written down about that scene okay i wow. did you have anything about uh charlotte going into the water in that little the the tr- the carriage thing that they back- the literal yeah. bathhouse yeah so uh, uh yeah. one quick thing about i knew there would start to be intimacy and seeing kate winslet is that her name yes so seeing yes, that is her name uh, seeing kate winslet Doing like paleontologist stuff back at home, I'm like, God damn, if she does not wash her hands and really scrape the dirt out of those nails, it's just going to be constant bacterial infections. I am sorry. Like she needs to clean those hands. But yeah, she just kept wiping them on her bla- on her uh, her, her skirt. I, one of my first notes was how people are like, oh, I wish I lived in Victorian times. No, you don't. You would have been miserable. It would have fucking sucked. The the chances you would have been the not even the one percent, the less of the one percent that owned all of the wealth is so slim. I could look at my lin like everyone should look at their family tree and their lineage and see like, was I ever wealthy? Well, guess what? If you're not wealthy right now, you probably were never. Unless I guess like the stock market crash I brought on the Great Depression, that could have shifted some people's financial standings as family lineage but my my case in point there people quit thinking the victorian time is fine no time is fine it all sucks (laughs) okay well uh i can't believe i failed at guessing james's notes but the only reason i failed is because he checked out of the movie and stopped watching it i I did have uh one thing about the dunking which was um Hey, are you are you out there sick? Do you got the chills? Do you maybe have the cold sweats? Well, how about instead of being focused on the cold sweats, just be focused on cold ass water. Get dunked in the ocean during the winter time. Why? <laughs> you could just get the negative ions that splash up on the water side that chemically, scientifically proven to help you feel better, and you don't even need to go in the cold water. Even if the, the, the water's warm, you don't even need to go in the warm water. I don't know what you're saying right now, James, but that's okay. Um, I mean, just a gentle reminder that medicine at that time, uh, every every ailment that a woman could express was, oh, she's hysterical. Yeah. And all of the treatment for the hysteria was torture. <laughs> so, yeah. like, they literally just tortured her in order to, quote unquote, make her feel better. But that's not, that's not how it works. It's not how it works. She, she just wanted to get bit. laid. That's what the story's about. <laughs> she really her did. Husband, her husband would not give her orgasms, okay? Like, she didn't go seeking out orgasms with Kate Winslet, but boy, howdy, is, am I glad she got some so that she could feel better. <laughs> My God. <laughs> she, she really did. She saw that man's just like healthy hog and was disgusted by it. She's like, no, no that's thank not you. What it is. is she no. leaned over to like, she leaned over to cuddle with him and he was like, no making babies yeah. tonight. And oh, she was like, well, fuck. It was him rejecting her. Like this character definitely is at least bisexual. Like not, you know, like. Okay. She's I, she's not rejecting her husband in any way, shape, or form. James, how did you take it? Uh, when no, when he stripped naked, it, she looked at him and kind of was like, like, oh no, I don't want this. Like, not not in like a straight up disgusted way of just like she turned away. Maybe it's because like he was dressing, and even if you've been in a relationship for I don't know she seven years, and it, yeah, and they they're dressing, you don't you don't watch them dress. You say, "Uh oh, cover my eyes," and then your spouse says, "Hey, you're making this weird now." But the immediate <laughs> shot afterwards. This is uh, this is why these long shots matter. Or these editorial shots matter is because the next shot right after she does a gentle look away is a hyper focus on his very attractive arm. Like there okay. was like something about the thing about this movie that I want to bring up too is that it's a very tactile movie. Like the whole all of the shots tend to be about the story of hands, and I felt watching it. 
I could feel every single texture in this movie. And that helped me like see their personal perspectives and also really like in the sensation of being there, if that makes any sense. Cora it wins. makes a lot of sense. And overall, like I, so my feelings for this movie, I'm not a huge person with uh, period pieces and things, but I, I love this movie. There's not a lot of dialogue in it. Um, it's all just beautifully shot and beautifully done. And it, it's like you said, it, it is focusing on different long shots and tactile shots to tell the story. And that's like what you've got to check in to see. Um, and that's that was like a stark difference between this movie and like The Favorite. And that's why I didn't really like The Favorite that much. Um, right. But this one, I'm like, ooh, okay, hello. Wait, what's, what's The Favorite? The one we watched last time, James. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. I was like, <laughs> The Perfection? That wasn't oh, no. called The Favorite? What are you talking about? I thought you <laughs> liked The <Locked> Perfection. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like a lot of those shots like told the story and it was a very it, it was it was very peaceful in a way for me too. Like there was like obviously some like shit going down with the mom and like stress and all that, but like these long shots of the beach and uh all that stuff. It was it had sort of a romance to it that helped boost that um that temporary fling romance that our two leads had. So mm-hmm. Maybe I've been conditioned as of late. Like when I want to longingly look at Nicole, she says, hey, quit doing that. You're being weird. So maybe that's why I'm roasting Nicole so hard. But I mean, it's all true. It's it's not roast. It's razzing if it's true. Oh, my God. And she's probably Jay. also I know that she's probably working on Photoshop. So she doesn't want to move all of the stuff off from her lap to come in and accost me so I can just keep <laughs> going at it. Uh, <laughs> uh, what? Uh, the, OK, so I was like, well, who, what's uh, what's her name? Um, Sersha, the uh, Sersha Ronan. I was like, who, who is this? Yeah. Well, looking at her and Lady I, Bird. Well, I was like, oh, the lovely bones. And I don't think I've ever told this story Mm -hmm. on a podcast. And it is like a pivotal story in X of mine. We she's like, let's go watch this movie. It looks so good. I think she had read the book and we go and watch it. Everything seems great. Like it's it's a beautifully shot movie. It's a very depressing movie. And then we walk out. It was opening night. We're with two friends and. This ex of mine goes like to the other side of the like hallway in this theater and just starts like manically crying. And uh, I'm like, hey, are are you okay?" And she's like, I never want to see that movie again. I never. And I was like, oh, my. Did this bring up some trauma? I don't know, because I was like 18 and didn't know that I should ask like, hey, when I say like, is everything okay?" Like, please talk to me about this so now i don't ever want to watch the lovely bones again in fear that maybe it'll bring up some trauma in me maybe i mean i'm very sorry that your ex experienced that but i can see why that movie would trigger such a reaction i mean it is for those of you who aren't familiar with the lovely bones it's about sexual assault and a, a serial rapist and murderer of children um so it makes sense that you wouldn't have a happy reaction to that yeah. Um, and more like the saddest thing in that movie is like him put spoiler alerts for a movie that, and book that came out in the last decade, the previous decade, <laughs> it, when he's like pushing the like he has all their like body parts in these uh, suitcases, he pushes them into a sinkhole. So that means like these will n- probably never be found. And it's just so fucked. I'm very surprised you went from our uh, nice movie to like this very traumatic thing, James. Well, it's it's this uh, Saoirse Ronan, which if you look up how to pronounce her name, you will find a supercut of every single talk show host that she has ever interviewed with asking her like, oh, it's it's spelled so weird. How do you say it? Do other people ever get it right? And in the beginning, it's cuts to be like, hey, this is when she was young. And as you you can like see her face, just her eyes become more deadened inside (laughs) as these interviews are super cut. And I'm like, wow, that I hope she's okay. Amazing. (laughs) I think she's doing great. I mean, she just did a movie with Kate Winslet. I feel like. 
she just... I have done a movie with Kate Winslet, um, but <laughs> I was an extra, so but we were in one scene together. Um, that is a gift that you will ride for forever. Yeah, I was in Divergent. Um, Hell so yeah. Very Kate... Yeah, very pregnant Kate Winslet was, uh, I was in a scene with her, so that was fun. But yeah, so let's go back to that movie. Then. <laughs> yeah. This, um, yeah, the movie that we're talking about, about the seashells and the, the fossils. The fossils. I th- oh, the, I have one more note. We watched the trailer last night, and Nicole, I think, was like, hey, oh, why is he watching this trailer? And because I, I wasn't like, oh, this is the movie where and, – and she's like, oh, after it got done, she's like, oh, I want to watch that. And I said, after me watching it, my reaction was like, hey, would you want to take my place as the guest tomorrow night? And she's like, I can't. I got to work. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, um, it would have been fun to have Nicole here. Yeah. I mean, James, you you should have checked in the movie. It was such a good movie. You need to rewatch it with Nicole. I get uh, – I – Nicole came home and I said, oh boy. And she's like, oh, is the movie super boring? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, yeah, I could see that. Oh my God. It, James, not every movie has to be like an action packed full movie. I, do, uh, I don't like think, things. Dude, and like, I keep bringing up Winnie the Pooh, the movie that came out in like 2011. Perfect movie. It's well paced. It's only like 82 minutes long and it's fucking great. I mean, I was sitting here watching this movie and there was not a single point where I was just like, oh, I'm bored. I was pacing. Yeah, like I I never wanted to check my phone. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I feel like there were just so many beautiful visuals. Sorry. Yeah, I feel like there were so many. It's all good. Thank you for uh, inviting me to share some of my notes. Um, I thought it was gorgeous. I mean, the first thing that we experience as an audience member is a dark screen and like this dripping wet sounds with like heavy breathing and it just feels like really primordial like it's already like bringing us into a sensuality and an ancientness that um i think is really true of the mary anning that they portray throughout this film and you know it starts off after that point in the british museum which i have seen the fossils that mary anning found they're now in the british museum of natural history and, and, you know, highlighting the truth of that time and also the truth of what women and people who are socialized feminine experience now, which is the immediate erasure of our accomplishments to uplift a cis man. Like, that's what they do with switching the nameplates immediately as soon as we see that fossil go into the museum. So those are, I don't know, just to kick us off, what do you think about those moments, I suppose? <laughs> I like that they showed us that like that happens because that Mm -hmm. happens so constantly with anyone that is not, you know, a straight white cis man. There are and a lot of our history in itself is often whitewashed or a very Christian mindset or point of view is put on like ancient peoples um, that don't necessarily have that religion or have that. Uh, that situation. So we have a lot of, you know, speaking specifically to LGBT people, we have a lot of LGBT people that have been lost through history because their corpses have been excavated and stuff with their love vision. They're like, oh, they're just friends. They're just best friends. They were warriors <laughs> together. It's like, no, uh, they were they were lovers. They were, you know. <laughs> so like, that's the thing that happens. And it's interesting to see a movie like show that just so blatantly the name tags or the the plates being changed. And uh, her discoveries being just like completely, you know, uh, washed away of what she did. And I like that whenever she goes into, she goes to visit Charlotte um, in her home and seeing that fossil, that ammonite that uh, she had found that Charlotte's husband had purchased and seeing the little placard that had her name like posted back over it to be like, nope, this was hers. I didn't mm-hmm. notice that. It, I was like, oh, what the fuck? And it was, and Ryan had to point it out to me. It was like, oh, it was her name. It was her name that got put on there. So that was, that was, you know, a nice like recall to that moment in the very beginning that we saw. Hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, I think this whole film does that of choosing to queer this history as opposed to assuming that it's straight. Like, I feel like that's the whole reason why this movie exists is we don't know very much about her romantic Mm -hmm. life because as far as her family members know 
she didn't have one, but she did have this very close relationship with Charlotte Murchison and with uh, Elizabeth Philpot. And it was cool that they were like, well, why couldn't it be love that was between them or romance or sexual attraction? Why wouldn't it be? Yeah, because um, that's a lot of the criticism that this film is getting is people are mad that they d- that they made her queer. And it's like, wait, why are you mad about that? Why are you mad? Yeah, that I saw the director was saying just what you said, like, why can't she be why why do we have to heterosexualize her and like let's oh, we don't know and i also saw like some of her living relatives like w- the, i think out of the two one was like yeah the, I, it could be and then one was like absolutely not <laughs> i don't know what my great great grandmother did i don't know she could be i don't know if in let's say 200 years someone were to write a movie about you and it what is it's up to like an interpretation I, i'm not going to say fictional or anything like it's hey this was a real person and let's do our own kind of twister not re i don't know the word i'm trying to th- say like our own you guys know th- what this movie is yeah so wh- how yeah. would you what's what would be a cool interpretation of me yeah I don't know. <laughs> they better make me gay. <laughs> they better make me gay. <laughs> if they're like, this, this man is straight, I'd be like, I will, my spirit will rise from the grave and end you all. <laughs> that would yeah. be it. I don't know. I feel like maybe uh, the interpretation of my life, someone would be like, oh, yeah, she totally killed a guy just because I'm really good at decimating people <laughs> on like Internet fights. Um, <laughs> we love that. Um, we love that. Yeah, no, I haven't murdered anyone in actuality. I just need to say <laughs> disclaimer, <laughs> this is recorded. Disclaimer, Gabby has not murdered anyone. Everyone needs no. to know Gabby has not actually murdered anyone. That, no, I'm just good at choreographing fake ones. That's for sure. <laughs> that makes me think like when Ted Cruz dies, will people make like their own historical interpretation of Ted Cruz as the Zodiac killer? Mm. Like yes. a movie like, oh, yes, this is. You know, like Abraham Lincoln was a vampire slayer. Well, in Ted Cruz and friggin' murdered a bunch of people. Yes. You know, in I this think film. we're doing that now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so it looks likely. <laughs> but like, yes. I, I don't think anyone right now could legal, like without litigation, make a right. movie where it, he's like, <laughs> takes off like a ski mask and it's like a young, maybe chiseled Ted Cruz. Probably not. Uh, chiseled? <laughs> Not it. Oh. He was like, wasn't he like six years old during the murders? Like, there's that's the thing is that he wasn't born at the right time. Now. Oh, <laughs> it's like saying John Mulaney uh, killed Princess Diana. He was not. God, yes, he wasn't there. He was. There was no way he could have done it. But, but it'd be cool if he goes. did. Yeah. What yeah. if? That's what this is. Is a giant what if? Oh yeah. Marvel's what if? It's really in the news right now. Corwin coming to Disney <laughs> Plus sometime this year. <laughs> no the cultural conversation. This is what is n- necessary right now in this day and age. What if Ted Cruz was a Zodiac killer? What if? What if Abby was an actual murderer? And what if Mary Anning was a lesbian? What if she was a lesbian? And while said, sure, people who don't kill people always talk about how they never killed anyone. They never killed me. <laughs> never. That's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think so, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> what, so what were your, you, you posed that to us, but what were your thoughts on that? The I don't know. Maybe like, oh, it was all a joke. He was actually happy the whole time. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Or like, wow, no, his co-hosts were purposefully doing this, not to get on his nerves, but to make him better. Or I can insert a cricket noise. (laughs) You want me to insert a cricket noise right here? Insert a cricket noise just right there. Right here, you're saying. Like, right now. Okay. Like, in the silence that followed. Hey, guys, right now you are hearing a cricket noise as I speak. (laughs) 
<laughs> I've done the same exact joke to Nicole when she said to do like insert a cricket noise, and then I went <laughs> insert cricket noise, and then uh, um, put it much later when she told me to put it instead I know, of where I know. to put it. I know. I know you're going to do that. It's already there. And that's why we give you shit, James. That's why we give you shit. Yeah, but it's funny, you know? That's the point of this podcast, isn't it? It's to make laughs, not to uh, dissect film. Uh, no. Yeah, it's, this movie is gay. It's, <laughs> to, go, 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 go it's, it's to introduce people to queer film that have not necessarily seen queer film. So there's a wide variety of queer film. Um, and this shows one that we have not seen very often on this uh, podcast uh, because a lot of the ones we watch are the zany, zany fun films that James loves. Yeah, I we got to get back to at least one or two of those soon. Too bad. The next one is also very uh, traumatic. You're welcome. The next one's great. I, I'm excited to talk about it. I was hoping we were doing that one tonight, so then it wasn't like back-to-back -back like, oh, you know, I wasn't really into this movie. Well, the only reason you weren't into this movie is because you weren't paying attention, James. I Come on. was, and then it this. made me not pay attention. <laughs> okay. So, um, a moment that... <laughs> made you pay attention during the podcast talk that we're having now that what didn't catch you during the movie was the urination. Can we talk about the urination for a second? Yeah, Please, go for it. let's do that. Yeah, so like, okay, so talking about the way that queer women are represented, um, just like the fact that we had a urination scene that is just like a woman squatting and peeing on rocks. And then, yes, it's gross that she handles food immediately afterwards. However, I just want to highlight that like, her earthiness did not deteriorate her sexiness during the moments of intimacy or connection between those characters. And that felt like revolutionary to me as a queer person watching two queer women on film. I mean, I, do, I don't know what Kate and Sears's sexualities actually are, but they're very straight passing. Um, so these characters is specifically what I'm referring to. So I appreciated the earthiness and the grossness of the film, like the digging through the dirt in order to get these rocks out. Like it was just, again, so tactile. That's the word that I keep coming to. <laughs> and that egg that I think was, it was a done chicken. very well. The, which also, okay, so I, for those of you that don't know, I grew up around farm animals and things like that. He's and lying. And my grandmother had chickens and <laughs> my mom had chickens. And, you know, I've had plenty of farm fresh eggs. And for a chicken to be in that egg, that egg had to be there for a while. They did not. They weren't getting those eggs every day. They were not getting those eggs every day because if they were getting those eggs every day, that chicken would not have been in that egg. That I, I was just confused uh, since they're so poor. And, you know, they were eating the eggs, obviously, as part of their like routine. How are they going to let an exit out there that long? That was also pretty early in the movie. And that might that eating scene did turn me off. So it it could all go back to my weird thing with food. And immediately I'm like, no, oh, no, no, no. Um, oh, no. Because the same thing happened in Eraserhead. They, they have a chicken that moves and they're trying to like cut into it and it's bleeding but still moving. Oh, my God. This movie's Eraserhead. Holy crap. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> this uh I think the director did a really good job with that like with establishing uh those characters especially without the dialogue. This movie yeah. is very dialogue light. There is not a lot of dialogue throughout the entire thing and he was able to really establish like their characters especially Kate Winslet's uh the stoicness and that her whole personality and everything like within just like her walking around and you know, looking for the fossils and uh, her limited interactions with her mom and Charlotte's husband and like things like that. Very, very established her, which was which was great. And in establishing them, I also want to bring up the Fiona Shaw's character. Just mm. that scene, uh, that that scene where they were at first introduced us to them, like as like having you know known each other. I was so drawn in and so intrigued. And I was like, I, I want to see, I want to see a movie on that. I want to see a movie with Kate Williams and Fiona Shaw's characters, like their whole relationship history. I want to see that. I want to know Pretty what cool. happened. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. It, it just, I mean, it, she showed up on that. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 go, 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 go. She showed up on that screen with like some hot, 
femme daddy energy and those like red leather gloves like I'm just like this is it and they're gonna get that sexy salve and like have like a moment of intimacy between rubbing that uh, basically vapor rub on her chest oh my god like <laughs> that, what an interesting passing along from the ex to the new girlfriend that was mm-hmm. uh yes but I agree I would definitely watch a Fiona Shaw and Kate Winslet two-hander about Elizabeth Philpot and Mary Anning for sure. It, it was just, like it just it just brought in Fiona Shaw and then Ryan screamed, um, obviously, <laughs> and then I was I was like whoa because she said she's got the corset, she's got the the open blouse just there, and she's like uh, hello red leather gloves, I got yourself for you. It was it was it was it was a moment. It was a moment. It was hot it was hot and that's another moment of like queer women representation that we don't see very often of like seeing older women looking so casually desirable like that was so awesome to see too and she kept that look throughout the whole thing too whenever she she went and uh went to the music uh the little music show uh that i think that Mm. every single person that has artist friends or music friends or whatever has gone to something that's similar to that she kept that sort of sensuality like there and then later talking uh to kate winslet's character um just like at the table after the loss of her mother it was it was like oh it was a whole she mm, great very very well established character very well established like you know that sensuality there um as well Mm -hmm. um yeah i think go ahead go ahead no no no, i didn't have anything else to say i just ended with um (laughs) (laughs) um um, well the sensuality of this film like beyond just like the literal textures that we're experiencing like there were some shots that I was just like, wow, if you don't kiss her neck right now, and then she wouldn't kiss her neck because she didn't know where she stood. And it was just like that sort of tension, that sexual tension that they were able to generate without leaning into like what we as a modern audience expect to witness as a building of sexual tension, again, was just like so masterful and vulnerable at the same time. Like the necks in this movie, I feel, tell such a story um, that I, as an intimacy director, was really excited by. I'm like, yes, you use that line. Yes, show us all these vulnerabilities. Oh, it was so great. And as an intimacy director, so we've got about nine minutes left before you've got you've to head out. Mm-hmm. So uh, would you like to, to discuss the, their, their intimate scenes um, or do you have any other notes There's, you'd like to like breeze through real quick? Um, just other notes that I have is like discovering that Charlotte is essentially, essentially a Utah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me say that sentence again. <laughs> that Charlotte is, a <laughs> that Charlotte is essentially a U-Haul lesbian by the end of the movie was kind of interesting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she's like, hello, she's move like, in with me, <laughs> move in with me right now. Um, <laughs> Um, and just like the tension between your new girlfriend and the ex at that dinner party slash concert was also very moody and very like honest and an and interesting tension that I didn't expect to witness in a period film. So like that was really cool. A um, lot of brooding, a lot of brooding in this movie. So we much love brooding. Brood. <laughs> it was really great. I, I love brooding. As far as intimacy goes, so I looked up whether they had an intimacy coordinator on this film. Um, they did not have an intimacy coordinator on this film. However, Kate and Shirsa choreographed their own intimacy um, before shooting it so that they were on the same page. None of that was improvised. And so that made me feel really good. Like there's a whole article with Kate Winslet, uh, an interview with Kate Winslet in Vanity Fair, where she talks about like, the depiction of sexuality in this film, but also over her whole career. And so it was just really cool to see that she advocated for that collaboration between her and her co-star in a way that could allow them to perform such sensuous connection between the two of them. Yeah, I think on a technical standpoint, there were some stacking issues of my professional (laughs) opinion. Um, But uh, overall, like, I thought it was really hot. I never felt worried for them as people. Um, And 
yes, you should wash your hands uh, before you uh, try to sim- uh, stimulate someone uh, who has a vulva. Please wash your hands. Even if they are <laughs> self-cleaning, do, do take care of your partner. <laughs> Please wash your hands. Please wash your hands before you eat, too. Uh, it's yeah. very important. Uh, that's how diseases spread. And um, it, the film does show that during that period, uh, certain cultures uh, that were primarily white were, were not very clean. Not very clean. So yeah, the romanticizing of that that time period, let's let's throw that out. You know, wash your hands, please. For the love of God, wash your hands mm-hmm. in all things. Um, did you have any other any other notes, Gabby? Um, cute tidbit is that the legend is that she sells seashells by the seashore is about Mary Anning. So I kept on thinking that throughout the film whenever she was <laughs> selling seashells Same. or fossils. <laughs> Literally every single time it showed her like sitting at the table at the shop, I was like, she sells seashells by the seashore. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's her. That's the woman this is about. Yeah, I mean, I thought this is a really great film. I highly recommend it. I, I wish that there was, um, and I haven't seen the entire production staff, but I wish that there were more Uh, feminine perspectives behind the camera but ultimately I felt that this is a movie to be celebrated in that it represents queer women in a way that I haven't seen before and also if you are a a paleontology nerd like I am then you definitely need to see this movie um yay dinosaur bones Mm -hmm. (laughs) um from uh, from Another perspective, I did look up like the director and stuff. He because he also directed a movie called God's Own Country uh, that's very similar to this, and that there's like little dialogue and stuff like that. It's a it's a queer movie um, that has been on my list of things to do. So we will do that eventually. But this director, um, I believe he identifies as queer. Um, I don't know for sure. It's not on his like Wikipedia or anything like that. But I'm pretty sure he is um, because I think God's Own Country pulls a lot of his like his own point of view and like uh, a what if situation Mm. for him himself and it's very gay so yeah the it has been absolutely lovely having you here and we absolutely need to have you on a future episode as well yeah um talking about more movies uh, especially when we can Mm. have a nice breakdown of a movie instead of just jokes with james jokes with jams <laughs> um gabby do you have any plugs anything you want to like throw out there you can be your social media like anything like that um and it can be absolutely nothing as well um just any of those before we before we you know wrap up sure yeah um if uh you are interested in my work you can check out my website gabby you can also find my professional page on facebook on the other social medias, my handle is theater underscore warrior. That's T H E A T R E uh, underscore warrior. And yeah, I don't know what else to plug. You can find some of my work on YouTube. Um, I made a, a very queer adaptation of Love's Labor's Lost, set during the beginning of the quarantine in Chicago. You can that's called Groups of Ten or More People. You can find that on the Little Brain YouTube page. Yeah, that's what I got to plug for you today. <laughs> Amazing. And it's send all those links to me uh, or to Corwin, and then I'll put them in the show notes. Yeah, oh, cool. so that people can like find it on like the Spotify and the Apple and like all that stuff. But yeah, it's been absolutely lovely having you here Hell and yeah. hearing your perspective and everything. Thank you so much for choosing the movie. I absolutely loved it. Would 100% recommend. James. Your guys' perspective has made me enjoy the movie more. So uh, if you're into this stuff, guys, well, check it out. I just, maybe uh, I, I wasn't, maybe I was antsy today. I don't know. <laughs> Well, there you go. That's a glowing <laughs> recommendation from Jay. Uh, my, my, my plugs per usual. Uh, follow me here on, on Twitch if you're here uh, or if you're listening to the podcast, follow me on Twitch uh, at Core Winning. Uh, Instagram, um, Twitter, all of those things at Core Winning. Uh, it's just my social media everywhere. Core Winning. You know, what, what more can I do? Or follow us here or on Instagram at This Movie's Gay. And also check out my theater company, Saltbox Theater Collective. Uh, They are doing things, so please check them out. And 
all the socials have always been in our podcast stuff. So like, you know, just find an episode, go check them out. And that's it. James. Just two things. Uh, anyone who's watching on Twitch right now or right now we're in a VOD. We have like 60 some episodes pre pandemic that we are just available in podcasting form. Wherever podcasts are found, just search this movie's gay or go to MLMPod.com. And go over to our Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash MLM pod, where we're, we do a bunch of exclusive podcasts, such as Engage with Nicolas Cage. That's Nicole and I. We're watching all the Nicolas Cage movies, talking about Beyblade. That's where I'm talking about Beyblade. The Toku Reading Corner. Nicole is reading Tokusatsu fan fiction and the podcast that be. That's TC and I. We are talking about the TV show Angel. If you want to hear two people talk about a show they absolutely hate, listen to that show. But we make it funny. Angel, two thumbs down. Oh my god! <laughs> um, Thanks for having me, friends. Thanks for being here, Gabby. Uh, and. I've been Corwin. Oh, I, I got to give a quick shout out to the $10 patrons. We have Steve F., Eric Berry Steve of Ryan. Ranger Command Power Hour, Alex Z., Orion, Kayla, Two Grapes, Duo Grun Fox. That's two fox for the price of grun. Tyler Wright and Elliot W. at Garlic Sunshine on Garlic Instagram. Sunshine. Um, yes, we love those wonderful patrons. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I've been Corwin. I've been James. I've been Gabby. Bye. 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 <laughs> this has been a Marshland Media production produced by James McCullum. For more content, please visit mlmpod.com. To support our network and have access to exclusive podcasts, head over to patreon.com forward slash mlmpod and sign up today.